And now it's time to open, open up your ears sure. and your minds, MMA fans. It's time for Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks are lots of fun, and his hair is in a bun, because it's... You yes. already know what it is. Rick's Picks. I was going to say something, gentlemen, but I got drunk. boys and girls, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the new craze taking the world by storm. Live from the Vox Studios in beautiful New York City, it's time for... Rick's Picks. <clears throat> ah, he left. Well, I was going to say, uh, Tuivasa told me that he came back. He's back and ready to go. I was like, oh, let's just go to Tuivasa. But now here we are. Listen, I mean, you want you want to bump me out? Let's go. I'm, no, I'm I mean they play here. they played the music. I was like, okay, this is perfect. No, so, no, he's he's. Uh, I said, you know what? We got Rick here. Ty, co-main event or not, you're freaking waiting so your I turn. I bumped him in the real order, and when you're about to tease him coming up next, and I bumped him yeah, in too. So yeah. double bump for That's Ty. That's my Sorry bad. About that. That's my bad. How are you, sir? I'm good. How about you? Oh, I'm good. You know, a lot going on, as you know, with 271, uh, Taylor Serrano, Sean Strickland. What do you yeah, think of Sean Yeah, a little Strickland? bit of you taking credit for making Taylor Serrano. It's I didn't say I made it. No, 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 no. That's, uh, I mean, that is slander. I said I deserve, I think, some credit within the MMA world of getting the word out about this fight. Am I wrong? I feel like I was you talking about... some credit. You I mean, credit. within the MMA world, not in the boxing world. And by the uh, way, let's be honest. Did it break your heart? Yeah. Did it break your heart that that your idol, Katie Taylor, wasn't up for coming on my show? Three round? Oh. No. no, what do you mean? She was just on. No, no, no. I thought maybe because like last week when Eddie Heard came on. Um, no. She, didn't break Serrano my heart. game. Yeah, you saw Taylor the clip? You saw the clip? She really gave her the stiff arm on that one. That was interesting. Here's the thing about Katie. Uber professional. Yeah. Smart businesswoman. In her mind, she's probably like, you know what? I don't get paid more. Yeah. And by the that's way, a, that's good cover. I I'm believe not that is good, very that's smart good on Serrano's part to just kind of throw that out there on the spot. She threw she threw down the gauntlet. She's she's challenging her. I love that. And then she do you, the, the 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 response was great. She's like, oh, I feel like uh, you know we're we're making history, yeah. and uh, you know this is going to be great. And, and and then and then Serrano went back, and she doubled down, and she's like, Yeah, but why don't we actually make like why don't we yes. finally tell the dinosaurs that we can go three minute rounds, I twelve see. rounds. And yeah, then, so, so, and then Katie's like, ah, I feel like we've proven enough. <laughs> it's like, all right, fine. So I think that's to my point. Like, I don't. Yeah, no. You know, I think it's a. I think it's a good look for Serrano. I don't know how, how good a look it is. Listen, in 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 a world where we like to count, you know, dubs and L's, that that, uh, that was a huge dub for Serrano. Oh, oh I thought you were gonna say, we're, you know, just no, I would never Katie say Taylor's that. Record, I would never say no. that. No, no, no. A huge dub for Serrano. It's a TBD. Yeah. By the way, maybe Katie went to the back after well, and was like, you know what? Let's add those damn rounds. Maybe, and I'm only I'm only joking because honestly, like if if you spent your career fighting a certain way, um, I get the willingness, the the gung ho attitude from Serrano to say let's do this differently, let's make truly make history. But I also kind of get if Katie Taylor's like, nah, this is how we've done it, and this is how I fight. If we want to talk about that, you know, next time before the in the planning, um, I'm game for that too. So um, I'm I'm only kidding, but I am looking forward. Uh, Are you going to that fight? We'll see. Wow, you're considering it too? It's look, it's in the hometown, you know. It's a like big deal. Tickets I know are pretty it's not, cheap. It's by the not way. Monday. It's not Monday, it's not but Monday. I might make an exception. Tickets are pretty cheap. Listen, did you look at the ticket prices? Not bad. Maybe, maybe we'll do some work. You know, maybe we don't have to pay a ticket price. Maybe, maybe oh. we'll do a little bit of work. Um, you think MMA fighting will cover it? There's a crossover appeal. <clears throat> no, I like it. Um, I like, but it. I would like to. I think I would like to be in the building. Yes. Yeah. Um, for history, mm -hmm. truly. History, her story. Her story, yes. Sorry. Right, sorry. Um, what about that Sean Strickland? Was he too hard on himself? Was he too hard on himself? Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. No, he wasn't too hard on himself. Really? I think I think he he was appropriately uh, tough on himself in this case. If you are going to continue to be the guy in the media who talks about murder, kill, this, that, the other... And you come out with that jab heavy performance where, you know, I'm not about to criticize Sean Strickland's fight style and say that he did not have uh, a great performance against Jack Hermanson or that he um, he isn't a, a capable and, and, and high level fighter. But if you are going to continue to push that narrative and that's the way you fought that fight, I think he's right to be a little bit hard on himself. 
I thought it was a fine performance. Check it right. was fine, but but that you don't you don't preempt that with murder this, kill this guy, this. I love right. to get into the slugfest, uh, yeah, 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 and then you come out with the with the most jab heavy performance that we've seen. It was uh, interesting that I he said that. he said two things that were really interesting. Number one, he said you know the the win bonus got to me, and he just kind of realized at some point like oh I'm about to win this fight, so let me just yeah. secure that win bonus, which again more you know, proof that the win bonus is actually a deterrent in my opinion. By the way, I'm not saying he's dumb. Smart man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart man. And then the other one uh, that I thought was interesting was like, oh, you know, these suits came up to me and I was like, oh, you know, and so yeah, that got pro- to me. Proximity to the title shot. He is he is on his way um, toward a title shot and, and he doesn't want to sacrifice that. Don't get me wrong. Smart decision. Understand it. Um, no criticism of the performance itself objectively if we just isolate it in a vacuum on a whole. I do understand if that's how you're selling the fight and then that is the f- result of the fight to be critical of yourself and kudos to him even on that front. Um, but yeah, you, there's there's a little bit of a disconnect between how he's how he's talking about fighting and, and what the end result was. So I get it. Interesting. Um, oh, and by the way, since you, you, and you're the perfect guy to ask about this because you have a, uh, a background in the world of PR. Sure. What about the post-fight, you know, like it's, it's not so much the post-fight interviews, but the post-fight press conference. Like that one on Saturday... You know, like the stuff he was saying to a few yeah. media members. It's don't it, don't love that. Don't yeah. love the media row session. It, um, it, no, by the way, a media row session is funny, but like you can't be offensive when doing it. Like I if don't you, love it in just in general as a concept either. Yeah, um, there's you know those people are there to do their jobs, not kind of be put in that position. That's true. Um, but there's a certain all PR is good PR aspect to it, right? There's a certain level of like, if he's not, if if all it's bringing him is positive attention, people are saying, look at this, you know, for one for one reason or another, and he's not being penalized for it or slapped on the wrist or, or suffering any negative consequences, it's hard for me to say that, you know, he shouldn't continue what he's doing. It seems to be working. So, you know, it, it does it sort of fly into the radar. Good. Like no one really has paid attention Again, to this enough. There's not been a penalty, right? There's there's nobody right. taking him to task for this, really. Um, so, but man, he is. I mean, he's pushing. He's pushing the he's envelope. Playing with fire. He's, he's pushing the envelope. I asked him his manager last week, like if anyone has ever said anything to. Him. Actually, you know what? I didn't ask him. I think it was PT that asked him. So my mistake. But um, he was like, eh, there there have been there have been chats. I'm sure, and we don't. I think that the the concern, right, or the fear is like. He's what we assume to be authentically him, right? He's trying to be authentically him. If we do kind of police that, then it becomes a situation where it's like, are we getting the genuine article? Do we, do we end up, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot and no longer getting authenticity from people? Um, but I think the the line of being offensive toward people is is where that should be drawn. Probably that that is the that is the issue. That it is, is amazing. I mean, talk about a guy who has no filter. I no. mean, that's just another level of. No but again, like, is that what we want, or do we want the filtered? That's the that's the issue. If 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 there's, I don't want the filtered, but like, I um, I think we're aligned. Yeah, I, I don't want a filtered version, but I also think it's okay to not, you know, if you're a media member trying to do your job, there not necessarily be a subject to uh, to offensive. I've always been up. drawn to the crazy characters. I like the crazy characters. Um, yeah. I want to promote the crazy characters. I want to support the crazy characters. I want to cover the crazy ca- Like Life is more fun with the crazy characters around. There feels like there's some there's a way to do that and be that way and not yeah. go too far to where and, you're not alienating people, fan bases, sectors, genders, whatever it is. Yeah, and, and I also don't want to... Look, I'm, you know quote unquote, like coming in, maybe not quote unquote, but I'm like essentially coming to the defense of people. Look, the media members who are involved in that may not have even been bothered by it. So I, you well, know, it doesn't seem like Oscar is bo- like the, the one that he keeps sure. going after is Oscar Willis of the Mac life. You're friends with him be- more than I am, but I yeah. just saw like on social media, like he's prom- like, it doesn't seem like he's bothered. No. British people have uh, probably a better sense of humor. <laughs> I mean, than there most. was a lot of people there though, you know, t- taking yeah, you know, getting shots taken at them, and and again, like it's not my place to defend, you know, to come to their defense if they don't need defending, and um, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a, certainly he is coming as close to the line, if not crossing the line, as you can. Yeah, um, I think it's. Do you imagine a buildup of him and uh, Izzy? I think Izzy. Yeah, I I think it's so different. I think what they do is so different, and and 
Izzy's not just, um, I think the thing with Izzy is he's not unfiltered for the sake of being unfiltered. Whereas I get that sense a little bit from Sean Strickland. Mm. Sean Strickland's just first thing that comes to mind. I'm going to tell you it, and and that's his one of his endearing qualities for some. Um, Israel's a lot more calculated. Israel is knows when to be unfiltered or tries to be unfiltered um, when it suits him, when it's best for him, and he's very calculated and he's a very smart um, individual. I agree. I agree. Um, and I think that that is a big difference between the two. But calculated. Yeah, v- everything very very calculated with him. Um, even those moments, you know, where he's letting you in, it's because he's chosen to do right. it as opposed to just, hey, I'm an open book, which right. is very much what Sean Tricklin is. He, he, here I am, love me, hate me, you know, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, very different characters. I, I, I don't think that would be a particularly uh, lopsided fight. I'd, I'd like to see that. Oh, yeah. Potentially one day. I do think Sean Strickland has given enough of account of himself that um, I'm looking at that as like, yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't know if Izzy just, you know, blows the doors off him. Um, I, I like to see that potentially. So, um, look, it's working. Whatever he's doing um, is working. And, and Well, as I said, I think at the top of the show, maybe not, um, I feel like he was probably upset because he knew that he could maybe cut the line I think he's right there. Oh, he. I mean, he's. He's. I think he should fight Vittori next. Yeah, Vittori or, or like Costa. Buddies. Right? Those. Those. Yeah, are two but fights. I don't know. Is Costa going to fight out eighty five again? Who knows? I mean, he says he is, but I think. I think he will. Right. Oh, so then, if let's say he is, it's Costa or Vittori. Costa or Vittori, and you know he's friends with Vittori, so I think he'd prefer Costa. So, um, but he is one like two fights. Let's say Izzy fights the winner of Brunson Cannoneer, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Let's say the winner of... Well... The winner of Whitaker and... Actually, yeah, if Whitaker wins... Of course. They probably run it back, right? Yeah. But let's say Izzy wins and, you know, everything stays the same. He probably fights the winner or, of the... Or, or uh, maybe they don't run it back immediately. You know, if I feel like we're getting into a situation where every single time somebody loses, yeah. we now have to... Do, every time a champion loses, we have to do an immediate rematch. They may not. Um, I think there there's a clear... Look, Brunson Cannoneer... That, that winner has to be the guy that's next in line. Um, and then right after that is is potentially, a you know, Strickland. Or if he waits and maybe he doesn't take a fight, he might be next up after that anyway. You know? It's not always... Yeah. Just knowing Izzy, I mean, from afar, yeah. I feel like he would kind of relish the idea of fighting a Sean Strickland. I, I think that... Guys, as game as they come, Israel. I, I no, but you know what I mean because he's, he's been for talking a new about challenge and yes, take any of new them challenge. That's the thing. He's he doesn't want to go. You know, Vittori again, yeah. Whitaker again, he, potentially Brunson again. He wants a new challenge. He's yeah. dying for one. And, and I think, look, if Strickland is the guy, he'll be the guy. Is he's a bit of the, the kingmaker? You know, he he gets to choose. He, he's he's he lining them up, and as he should. Um, so if Strickland, you know, gives a good account and, and makes himself the uh, the unmistakable guy, then yeah, I'm, I'm into it. All right, so what do we got? Rick's picks this week. Brian Battle. Um, wow. The real tough winner. You know, he he solidified that. He cemented that with his win over Treshawn Gore, the, the fight that was supposed to be the tough finale and then ended up not being because Gore was injured. He had to pull out. Um, what I loved about this performance, beyond just, look, shout out to Brian Battle for winning the fight and and uh, beating Treshawn Gore on Saturday. He had the tough trophy with him. He had his coach, his coaches hold it, and he brought the tough trophy um, I love the the pettiness of that. I am a big fan of that level of petty. Man. Of saying, putting it in people's face and being like, this trophy was always mine. Um, everybody doubted me and I, I'm still holding it. And I bet he would have given it to Treshawn if if he won too. Or You think I, so? I, I don't think, know about that. I don't know about maybe that. Maybe not, but uh, that would have been a good move. That would have been a cool move if he did that. Um but I'm a fan of uh, I'm a fan of that level of petty of of carrying that hardware around and being like, look, you, everybody's out. He was the last pick for Team Volkanovski. Everybody's doubted him. It's been like this inevitable, like this crawl to Treshawn Gore is the 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 real tough champ. He's going to knock him out and yada yada. And he's probably been hearing that and hearing that and hearing that and hearing that since the airing. Um, and he got to shove it in people's faces, and I love that. I love the pettiness of that. And I also loved his exchange with Bisping. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. Where he said, "Who who needs two eyes?" And I feel like he knew what he was saying there. He was giving a little wonder, bit of a wink. I wonder. I wonder. I feel, feel like, like he, just, he knew. Really? He kind of did a bit of like a uh, oh a really the ribs type. Like it sounded like he knew what he was doing there. He's he's a smart and kind of funny dude. Um, but Bisping saying, "Tell me about it," is just tremendous. Um, but yeah, I love that. I love. I like. I think Brian Battle's a great character. Um, I think he. I think he could really be something interesting for uh, for MMA. I, I like him a lot. Who wins, Battle or Maximov? 
Yeah, it's hard to look. I I thought very highly of of Punaheli Soriano. Um, I thought he was going to win that fight. I thought there's. A I couldn't he believe he was the underdog. Could, I mean, I put my could have money won where that fight because I think he did more damage in every single round. Um, there wasn't much going on from Maximov there. Um. I um I like yeah, the call back. Just, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I <laughs> you just went right through it. I mean, who bets on Soriano? Goes Maximov, horrible. Well, because I think Soriano won that fight. You really do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maximov didn't do anything, unfortunately. Like it was the it was the most it was the uh, uh, Casey, our our colleague at MMA Fighting, me, pointed this out, and it was extremely astute. It was the least Diaz like fight from somebody associated with oh, the 100%. Diaz brothers. It was it was all grappling, zero damage not trying to uh do much of anything i really think you can make a pretty strong case that that puna won that fight um there there was not a lot going on there from from nick's side um but either way uh it's i i think highly of puna uh, and you know for for whether i agree with the decision or not it was at least close enough i think to to make the case uh for for maximov there and that would be a tough fight I think that'd be a tough fight for battle. He's he's a really good grappler. He's a really good wrestler. I kind of feel like they should make that fight next. I I wouldn't mind it, but Just I with feel the story like storyline of tough and everything like that. Yeah, but he's. I don't know how many people even know about that tough storyline when it comes to Maximov. Like, that's what you like, promote. That's what you. That's what you're there for. Yeah, it's a little in the weeds. I think I, mean, I think Maximov is looking yeah. up up a little bit more um, at this point. Look, Puna Puna's a really good win. That's yeah. a really good win. I feel like. Battle is underneath that. I don't feel like at this point in his career. Let me let me be clear. Yeah, I feel like battle is going backwards. You know, if you're if you're doing the the ranking, even though neither is ranked, if if you're doing that pecking order, um, and I feel like uh, I feel like Nick's looking upward now. All right. Um, shout out to Rick's pick for this week, Habib. Habib for oh, don't not tell me knowing I not believe. knowing huh. who Drake was. No back way. At UFC you believe this? I do. I do believe it. Really? He didn't know this guy. He didn't know, know this guy. What where did he? You, where did he say? Are you calling? Are you calling BS? I'm calling BS. On Habib, he's no selling it. Where did he say it? By the way, give credit on on the Full Send podcast. Oh yes, the hottest. Uh, is that is that your new favorite? Oh, it's uh, they're the biggest influencers in MMA. I That's mean, your new favorite. I just found out what Full Send means. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. It, it does means not like going me. all the way. Yeah. Now, will the purses that you know, like with the sponsorships that they do with these guys, will they be half send? <laughs> or are they gonna do full send purse? You're talking, you know? talking about like show and win, is that yeah, well, I just don't know. Is it or at least with the sponsorship deal? I mean, like, huh, like, geez, Louise. They have a great ability to like find something that's something cool, you know, somewhat cool, and then just shove it down our throats. Yeah, look, this I is mean, like there's... this is like Nick the Tooth circa 2010. <laughs> I mean yeah, a little bit. Every yeah, right. freaking second, it's the freaking Nelk Boys. The Nelk Boys. Look, don't tell but... Tweevas I say this. I was I, about by to the way, say, there's I fighters have no, who are buying into it too. Like I have no beef. Be- they're Canadian. I, you know, I support everyone who's Canadian. I like they're self-made. It's a great story. But why is it? Why does it feel like there's more Nelk Boy content on the UFC channels than there the is UFC like content? Casey O'Neill content? Well, I mean, there there probably is. Well, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, do no, we be- I mean, do we believe also that they're actually going to be sponsoring these guys? And by the yeah, way, I thought, you're, I thought you're not allowed to have your own sponsors for the fight. Like, what are you going to come out with a Nelk Boy? logo on your shirt no i'm sure there's more it's probably more akin to like a patty pimblet bar stool I type guess. deal than there okay um and also deal. what if they go to this event last night and it's like oh we don't it's like it all duds yeah. yeah maybe they just wait i think they're going to multiple uh, uh, okay this is way too in, deep uh, into the like it's just like no being rammed universe. down my throat constantly yes it is. i will say the podcasts are good production like they have a couch in there how do they bring this couch everywhere <laughs> Good production. They have a couch. No, I mean, they, they actually travel with a couch. The couch was in the cage. Did you see that? I did see I've that. I've seen that couch. Habib's in... done a couch in the cage at Eagle FC. Remember? They were all chilling. Oh, on the, they were. On the they were. Yeah. Um, oh, maybe that's where they use that couch. Okay, fair enough. But let me say... Uh, Sorry. L- let me bring this back to Habib for a second. Yeah. I 100% believe this. And, and I, would yeah, never, I would never dare uh, question the Eagle. Um I just love I just love the fact that Habib like and even now there's a little bit of like pride in his voice that he's just like I don't have time for this. The only thing I care about is smashing people. Well, um, not anymore. Teaching people how to smash. Teaching people how to coaching right. people to smash yeah. organizations that have fighters that smash. <laughs> uh Habib Habib is just all, we smash. You know it's very it's very uh apropos to steal a word from you that you that you like a lot. Um 
Alexander Gustafson talking mm-hmm. today about Hamzat Shemaev, another person fi- training five times a day, another person who all he cares about is smashing people. Um, and you can kind of tell that from the training footage that sure. just like, it looks like, to me, it looks like a um, like an apex predator, like feasting on prey. Like every time you oh, see yeah. a new piece of uh, footage of Hamza Chemaev, he I, it just looks like he's always going 100 miles an hour um, and always at at full uh, full send. Uh, he's always sending <laughs> wow. it. Is- he's always sending it. Um, Hamza, another guy like that. Um, I like I like the fighters of that of that ilk of that uh, you know of that mentality. Um, and Habib, shout out, shout out for, you don't need to know Drake when all you're doing is smashing people. Is it fair to say that if he didn't know Drake, he doesn't know who the Nelk boys are? Yeah, he had no clue. I, in fact, I think the Nelk boys, their first appearance on UFC programming was when they went to Fight Island. Right. And I believe they, they did that introduced them thing. to Habib yeah. and Habib was not into it because he had no idea who they were. Well, so in I fact, feel like from the confirm. clips I saw of that, and by the way, like, uh, I know some people are going to try to spin this that I'm hate, like their views are nuts. Everything they do. Yeah. But I feel like there were moments there of just of the clips. I didn't watch the whole thing where he's like, why am I doing this? Like he felt very yeah, but <laughs> that's, that's disinterested. True, but I feel like that's every Habib interview. Actually. Is it? You can kind of see the points where he's just like. Uh, what am uh, I doing here? Yeah, what am I doing what are here? We doing? But he, he's, I'm he, above this. But he's he's having to adapt to this role, right? Of now he's like a personality and now he's, he's a promoter. promoter. He's having to like put that hat on. But I think that's always inevitable in every Habib interview. He was never like that with me, just for the record. Listen, back was, in the days. It was real the, the real OGs remember. The real OGs they, remember. They remember when he was getting injured and people used to say, why do you have this guy on? You remember that? Sure. And then- the I, I remember there was one time in particular he joined us from a restaurant or something. Do you remember that? He was in a restaurant hmm. and everyone's like, why do you have him on? He's made of glass. All he does is pull out. For some, the restaurant- portion of that is not it was a year-end yes. video it was they're, a year-end show it was like the december or maybe it was a january it was winter time and i remember he was on and i remember getting a lot of hate for having him on oh i remember all the hate that we yeah. used to have for getting, having him on to, too because it was you know a time in his career where he, he was often injured or he was on the sidelines yeah um recovering and people were like oh well, again 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 but there was a reason there was a reason there was already. You knew. You knew that the eagle would be something special. Yeah. Um, my last shout out, Rick's pick for this week, Jack Hermanson. Mm. First of all, just what a mensch in what general. A mensch. What a what an appearance last week. Love that week. guy. Love that guy. Even playing along with your non look alike look alike. Oh, like, it was just so not, it was not so spot good. on. It was so um, close. But but shout out to Hermanson for playing along with that. The poem, the the lyrical poem that he released uh on Sunday. Yeah. Just who does that? He's just a very special. He's great. He's a very special type of fighter. Um, wishing uh, Strickland luck in his future murders. Um, I mean, just <laughs> a plus, a plus for Hermans in there. Um, what a great character to have in the sport. Um, tough, you know. Again, up, down, up, down. It's been a rough. Like he can't seem to get over that hump. Um, at the top of of one eighty five. Um, but great character to have around. Great fighter. Um, shout out to Jack Hermans. So likable. Yeah, just a mensch. By the way, very underrated video blogs, high, high production quality. 100%. Very high production I remember quality. the one in, in particular where he got the news. Uh, who was it? Who was it that fell out of the fight? Costa? Costa, right? Mm, Is that right? So. Yeah. Uh, Is that right? Who was it? Which fight? He got the news that somebody somebody was out of the fight. And then he got a last minute replacement. This is COVID era. You know, you know, someone was talking to me recently yeah. about like, oh, I can name every, um, a friend of a relative was like, I can name every pay-per-view from 190 on. You know how I always say. Yeah, you're, you're. Not like COVID times, like none of them stick out for me. Like if you ask the me. pay-per-views you're talking. All the events, like 265, 240. Oh, wow. It's all, I've lost all oh, of Oh, so you can't do it anymore. I can't it's do it anymore. To, it's up to that era. It's up to like 220. Wow. Yeah. That was your. That was, that was your my thing. thing. That was your calling card. Who was it that replaced? I don't know. Was it v- not Vittori? Yeah. Was wasn't it Vittori was stepping in for somebody though? But who was Vittori coming in for? Holland. Right. No. Holland's usually the one coming in. I don't know. Now, now I'm like, oh, I remember. And then I don't even remember what the hell it was. But I remember him getting the news of his opponent falling out and him just being like, Shabazian. Oh, man, Shabazian. Don't tell me. No. Yes. Not sh- was yeah. It yeah. I think was- that was right. Oh. 
And he was just like, no, no, no. No, it was Hong. Don't, don't, don't tell me Hong. that. And uh, and then five seconds later, he's like, yeah, give me the fight. Because he's, he's that type of dude. Yeah. Or and Darren that Till. was all, that might be what it was. It mm. was Till. It was Till. And uh, it was all on the video lo- It was all on the video blog. Um, really high production. And uh, just shout out to him for for blessing us with that content. Yes, yes, yes. I love that guy. Always so smiley. Beautiful Joker. smile. Yeah, I guess he is the Joker. But when you think of the Joker, you think of like a bad guy, right? You think <laughs> He's of the villain. good one. He's like yeah. the nice Joker. He's the uh, the lovable Joker. A tough stretch for him. But if uh, the last few fights are any indication, that means he's going to win the next one. Uh, yeah. It, it one loss, good. one loss. Who do you like in the main it. event on uh, Saturday? Have you made your... Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I can't really get off the Israel Adesanya yeah. train now, right? Been like, on that train for a while. I've been on that train for a long time. I wonder if he regrets going up to 205. Like, could you imagine if he was no. still undefeated? No, he doesn't he strike me I as know. that type of dude. He strikes me as the type of dude who will take a lesson away from that, honestly, yeah. and not the type of dude who's going to um, let that, like, eat him up. I mean, it's the same with, like, every time it's like, oh, you know, how's Israel going to respond to this? He comes out and just smokes somebody. Like, it's. Yeah. I don't think he's that type of guy to, like, let it weigh him down. He seems to be, like, really focused, locked in the gym type dude, just get it done. It's hard for me to pick against Israel. I'm kind of, I got to be honest, I'm kind of with him when it comes to like, the Rob looks stuff. good. Rob looks good. But does he look that much better? Like, are his improvements that much better? I, I think it will be a much better fight because I don't think Rob fought the right fight the first time. Um, I think he was very emotional. And as he said, you know, himself, I think it will be a better fight. But I'm not looking at Rob Whitaker and thinking to myself, like, this is a completely changed fighter that has a, a, a completely different um, look for Israel Adesanya. I think Israel is this good, man. I really do. I, I find it hard to believe that any of the current crop of middleweights is going is to be able to push him that hard. Um, he's he, re- he really is that good, and that striking is on a different level. Is it fair that he's not the number one pound, pound fighter because he went up and lost as opposed to— Yeah, well— Risk and reward, right? Because if yeah. he had gone up and won that fight, he would have vaulted to number one undoubtedly. Sure. People would have been putting him in that spot right away. So I think that makes sense to me that, you you know, look, you took the risk and, and it came up short. So you, you, there has to be a, a, a little bit of a ding there because if he had won, he would have he would have been number one, no doubt in my mind. As good as Kamaru Usman has been, he would have been number one. Um, I think it's fair, but man, do I think he's good. I really, it's, it's hard for me to see anybody beating Israel right now. All right. That's a Saturday. Thank you very much. You'll be watching? Nah, you know, I'm just going to skip it this time. All right. Eh. I mean, I know you love Izzy. That's your guy. You were talking about Izzy when he was fighting in China back in the day. You were like, oh, this is this guy. It's Izzy and Felicia Spencer. Those are your two big claim to fame. Not bad. I did all right. Well, I mean, one won a belt. Title holder and title contender. Yeah, not bad. I did all right. All right, there he is, everyone, New York Rick. And in a matter of seconds, spread the word. We're going to be joined by Bam Bam, Tai Tui Vasa, of course. Everyone looking forward to the main event between uh, Israel Adesanya and Robert Whitaker.